Nothing is factual, nothing is fictional, and everything is interchangeable. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Things are really fucked up. It's been a while since I've been here, so I hope you guys are having a fantastic Saturday. This is a solo episode, and, um, you know, I stopped doing these because I've been incredibly busy, but even more so, uh, just tired of delivering bad news. Constantly, you know, being in a state of agitation from the, uh, you know, negative news feeds around Kratom, around uh, the Tiana products, the various different things that are going on. While we see, you know, some of these other issues around the country that could be politically, that could be with fentanyl, that could be with the opioid and mental health crises that we see. It's a, it's a really difficult time to say the least. That's probably the best way I can put it. My name is Mike. Every week I discuss topics that I care about. Hopefully you find them of value as well. Today's Daily Dose is partly brought to you by Grass Door. Cannabis delivery made simple. Save a whopping 40% right now. Just use the code daily at checkout. If you want to help support the channel, there's other links down below in the description and just know I appreciate it. So I saw this and I posted it on Twitter. Uh, Montana somehow slip something into a bill right before it passed to ban Kratom. And um, this is, once again, why I try to stay away from the news as of lately. Just uh, dumb shit like this happening. And it obviously doesn't make sense. Um, there's so many states already that have done it this way. And, you know, think think about it this way. Why, you know, why do they have to slip it in last minute if it's the right decision to make the reason why they have to slip it in last minute before a bill passes is because they have so much fucking opposition to banning kratom so let's put that there i'm gonna leave that there for a second in any case um with all the different issues we have in this country they're focusing on banning something that actually brings a little comfort a little you know a little oomph to somebody's life now i've used kratom for a long time i use it for pain i use it for energy um, and it works very well it's a remarkable substance and all natural as you know some weeks back i did a video looking for a replacement i've been searching for a kratom replacement and it's not easy I have trialed many different plant extracts over the course of the last two to three months, and some of them are close, not quite. Some break through the blood-brain barrier pretty quickly, create euphoria, stimulate serotonin receptors, and then some that don't do that but have pain relief. Uh, some have energy properties but don't have the other properties. So it's uh, kind of all over the place. Now, I feel like even these probably have a limited lifespan until, you know, some kind of government legislation comes in and says, no, you can't have this. You're only allowed to use our drugs. Okay. Remember that. <laughs> That's really how it feels sometimes. Um, so I, uh, I don't know. It's a very stupid decision to make and um, after speaking with thousands of people over the years, everyone's case is different. You know, we have really extreme cases uh, of pain management. You know, I see it in the comment section when you guys leave them down below on some of these videos, you know, um, spinal surgeries, back surgeries, just quality of life really sucks. And then you discover Kratom and it's the saving grace of all of it. Uh, to be told that you can't use it blows my mind. When did the government have the right to tell you what is appropriate to use and what is not. Um, and of course, that comes within reason. I totally get that. We don't want um, dangerous substances on the streets. And while I say that, we know that fentanyl is pouring in rapidly and it's fucking killing all kinds of people. I saw that one video of that sheriff in Florida who just collapsed. I'm like, this shit is fucking dangerous, dude. Um, but I don't, I don't see enough action there. Yeah, you know, that's like why there, there should be a little more uh, effort in doing something with that. But and yet nothing or little is done. But 
uh, instead they want to focus on banning kratom. So what do you know? If we do so, uh, and though I know there's a lot of people in the comments that I've seen who are optimistic, they say, then you know, don't throw your hands up yet. You know, there's hope and whatnot. I'm losing faith in the system. I've been losing faith in the system. I just don't, you know, I don't think it's working for us and it hasn't for a long time. Um, and I've seen it in the comments where people say, you know, voting, <laughs> come on, you really thought voting is going to do anything just like, uh, you know, the last election. So I don't know. I, uh, I get furious, frustrated, much like many of you would. Um, and the only thing I can feel is, you know, the loss of hope, you know, for especially for those millions of people out there who need it for pain management when they're not getting enough from their physicians, uh, when they're not getting anything at times from their physicians, um, what do they do? You know, I'm the one who has to hear these stories. You understand that? Yes. It's week after week, month after month, I hear these stories again and again and again. And I say, I can't ignore this. You know, I, I see that there's a need for something, something to, to help alleviate pain, to alleviate stress and depression and anxiety. And this is why I'm so interested in the work that I do, plant extracts and the like, including nootropics. These are all very interesting substances and products. And I feel like there's um, a lot of room to grow and to discover things over time. Now, you know, there was a video I did about Tiana not that long ago, a few months back. And, um, you know, I was having a discussion with somebody who uses them. It's falling into the same uh, unfortunate circumstance that Kratom's falling into. It's just getting banned you know, here and there and here and there. And uh, even though it does have a, some some use, some medical application, I mean, my goodness, the main active ingredient, the TNeptine, is a mild antidepressant. So clearly, like, it has an effect. It, it was at some point used medicinally somewhere. Um, and the, uh, the potential for abuse and the many other things that come up in this specific conversation are a morality question. And I struggle with it too. Do I carry these products? Do I not? I mean, do we have any control over what people do? Um, the government seems to think so. They seem to think they can tell you what you can use and what you can't. Um, and that's very dangerous, I feel. Just as dangerous as the potential of abuse of any substance. Um, because just like the narrative that we saw for a century with cannabis, that it's so bad and you shouldn't have it, boom, in a handful of years, you see a complete 180. So what's the difference here? Why is Kratom being treated differently when, uh, it's, I would feel, I would say, I would argue that they're pretty much the same, though not the same in effect. And one would be considered maybe worse, right? So like cannabis might be considered worse because if you use too much, uh, smoke too much weed and you're unable to drive, but yet you do so, that's kind of a problem. Kratom doesn't have that problem necessarily. So that's kind of an interesting perspective there. It doesn't have the same psychoactive effects as cannabis does, but yet so dangerous. They say regulation, it lacks regulation. Okay, give us regulation that makes sense. Um, and even then, I don't have a lot of faith you'll get, you, you know, those guys will get it right. I mean, clearly they didn't get the cannabis uh, legislation right either. There's massive problems associated with it. Whether they know it or don't know it or ignore it, it exists. Um, so it, even if we tried regulation for Kratom, uh, it's certainly possible they'll get that wrong too. I got the notification from the AKA of Montana banning Kratom. Um, if you're not sure who they are, the American Kratom Association, and of course, they're biased in some manner or another. However, they have been playing a very active role in the industry and as advocates. They spend a lot of money, and more importantly, they've been um, influencing and lobbying 
to uh, put in place the uh, Kratom uh, Consumer Protection Act, something that uh, just makes sure it's safe, it's tested, it's okay to use. Um, now, funny enough, Nevada has something very similar. And just the last day or so, they are attempting to do the same thing with that too in Nevada. They're trying to ban it. Hard to believe, right, that um, this is a free country. If it's so free, why can't we just vote on these things? Maybe because it will be an overwhelming defeat for those who want a specific outcome, which is to keep Kratom out of your hands, no matter what. For, you know, to what end, what the, what the purpose is, I don't know. Someone's going to benefit, as always. Who that is... I don't know, but it's certainly not you or me. That much I can be certain of. I don't know what else to say. This is why I really can't do these videos that often. Um, I just feel like, what is there to say? I'm, I'm just talking to a wall. There's very little we can do to influence any of these politicians who have already made up their minds. Um, furthermore, you know, as I was talking about TNFT earlier, following the same kind of process that Kratom is following, just getting banned state by state, um, I had Vice News tell me recently that they were going to do an article on it. And by now, they probably already published it. So they, um, they had already made up their minds about how they want to portray the information around the products and the, the substance itself. Um, and they were asking me several questions. They wanted me to answer them, and I refused to, being that it was already clear the you know the direction the story was going. It wasn't for informational purposes. It was for the purpose of um, instilling fear in the public. Um, and you know, where are the facts? So I, I don't even think any facts that I could have brought up in corresponding to the email would have even made it onto the front page of such an article but you know they ask questions like are you aware that it can be habit forming are you aware of the overdoses etc cetera, etc cetera? And, and um are you n notifying or telling your customers when you sell them that it could be habit forming and i and i thought to myself well this is crazy you know number one if they bothered to have checked my google maps listing for my store it would show you typically how long people spend in here. At a minimum, it's 20 to 30 minutes or more. Why is that? It's because we spend a great deal of time talking about what options they have, what is someone dealing with, what could we potentially um, provide them in order to help alleviate whatever the symptoms are, whatever they're trying to do. So... Clearly, they didn't look into that. They would have seen, yeah, yes, I spend a great deal of time with people uh, helping to inform and educate and um, find a, a reasonable, safe solution, uh, including letting people know whether something is habit-forming or not. And virtually everything under the sun is. So what do you do with that? <clears throat> um, so I never responded to that email. And... Part of me wishes I had, and part of me is like, I'm glad I didn't because it just, it probably would have backfired anyways. There's nothing that I could say to persuade any specific news story of uh, uh, that has already kind of decided a direction. Ultimately, they probably already released this and people already know about it, but no one's overdosed from TNF. It's a mild antidepressant. That's never happened before. I don't know why they would say that it, you know, that it has. Um, and if it has, like there should be evidence of this, yes, but I don't see any of it, and nor was any provided in that uh, in that initial email. It's crazy to me. The narratives, you know, this is why I say it's all interchangeable. You can interchange it and shift it and make it work for whatever your belief system is. Facts don't matter. And um, that's pretty much it. 
that's kind of the world we live in now. Opinions are criminalized. Like you can't share your opinion um, on social media. All of a sudden, it's like if you do, you you get the whole mob um, coming at you for one reason or another. I thought we were free. We should be free to speak our minds. We should be free to use whatever we think is right within reason and that has already been determined to be safe. Um, what I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave them down below. I'll catch you guys on the next one.